Welcome to South Florida Saltwater Fishing. I'm Heath, and it's time to get into the bite. Dolphin in the boat. Oh my God. Woo! Dolphin in the solo kingfish trip right there. That's mutton snapper right there, baby. It's early morning. We're rigging up. And we're heading towards the inlet. We're gonna head offshore, dip some lines in the water. Hopefully, with any luck, we'll be bringing home some food to the family. Before we get into this, though, if you want to learn more about fishing, grow as an angler, or just see some great and exciting offshore fishing adventures, you can start by hitting the subscribe button. And don't forget to turn on the notification bell so that you won't miss a thing. All right, folks, it is a beautiful morning. We're getting ready to make a run out to the fishing grounds. You know what that means. We'll see you out on the water. Okay, folks, so we had our Boca Inlet this morning. Sun's up a little bit over the horizon. Uh, we're just to the north, not too far north. And we're about three to four miles offshore, currently sitting in just over 600 feet of water. I got some debris all around me. We're gonna get up and start doing some top water trolling. One of our setups for top water trolling is this, a Pen 12H, small conventional reel on a seven foot star rod from the handcrafted series. Our second setup is gonna be this, a little bit of a meteor offshore trolling rod, a Pen International 30, spooled with 30 pound monofilament on a seven foot AFCO rod. Both of our lures that we are going to start out with are Billy Bait Mini Turbo Slammers, four and a half inch lures, on double hook tandem setup. And they're both rigged with 40 pound monofilament leader, about eight to 10 feet of it. All right, so the idea is, is we've got some scattered big weed patches here just off the continental shelf, which I call the 550 ledge, which is a ledge that runs from about 550 feet out to 650 feet off the Southeast coast of Florida gets us into the stream, which is really close down here. First line we're gonna let out, which is gonna be the long line, is gonna be the International 30. We'll let it out, you know, not too overtly far, but you know, about 150 feet or so. Now, as we're traveling, we're gonna wanna pick up the speed a little bit. Speed is a factor. You can't be going so slow that the fish has time to run up and examine the bait. You've got to make them chase that bait down. The core theory behind trolling is that you are pursuing a fish that is actively hunting. If they're not actively hunting, they're more than likely not going to strike it anyway. They will run up, look at it, and zoom away. All right, we got enough line out on first line. Set split. Good to go. So when you're trolling solo, you're sending out multiple lines. It can be a trick, especially on a small boat. So what I want to do is I've got my first line set out on my port. I'm going to turn to that line so that it sort of kicks my line almost perpendicular with the boat. And then, and then I'll be able to let out my second line. All right, so my line is kicked out that way. Now we're almost traveling completely north. Let this line out, you know, about 75, 100 feet, which is the Pen 12H, the smaller of the two conventional reels. All right, we let out enough line on that one. Gonna set our click. Good to go. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna tether our rods to our boat in case we get a nice fish that hits, have some recoil on the line. We don't want our rods going in the drink. We're riding around 630 feet of water. What we're gonna do is we're gonna pick up the speed. Like I said, we wanna be going between eight and 10 knots. We're gonna cover some ground, hunting for the fish. We started out in an area where there were some big scattered, big weed patches. Nothing hit while we were getting set up and getting underway. So we're gonna keep heading out deeper, 
see if we can run into some other debris fields, find the fight. Okay, folks, we are up and rolling. We got the Pen 12H, the short line. And we got Pen International 30, doing right around nine knots right now. Essentially what we're doing right now is some blind trolling, looking for life. When you're offshore, you're trolling, you're hunting the ocean. It can be a barren desert until you find signs of life where fish will congregate. should we run across fish. If you ever get seaweed on your line, you have to clear it off, otherwise you're not gonna get anything to bite it. I've checked my leader for any fraying, which is good. The tuna did not fray on my leader, so I can just set it back out. All right, so I'm letting out the second line, short line. Again, I'm only gonna let this one out about 75 to 100 feet. I'm gonna get back on the way. Head back out east. All right, so we're set up. We're picking up the speed, and we're going to head out east. All right, so we're back up and rolling. We're trolling by a couple of small pieces of debris right now. And head right by them. Pull the lines right next to them almost, and uh, see if there's anything hovering underneath it. The way it works with debris and forms of life, as what they call it, is 
you've got this debris. It attracts the smaller fish which hide underneath it. They seek shelter. Then the predators hear them scurrying around eating the little shrimps and microorganisms. That's when the predators come in and move in and eat them. It's the cycle of life. That's how it works. That's why they say you're looking for forms of life even though you might say debris. How is that life? Well, it harbors life. It holds life. It's where the fish come to forage and the predators come to continue the life cycle and show why they are apex predators of the sea and they dominate the food chain. You got dolphins. Yeah, look at what's up. Time. There's no rush to get them in. We know we've got them hooked. Hooked them in right around 960 feet of water. So what this shows you is that you've got to be persistent if you're hunting down pelagic fish, especially if you're targeting a species. You can't let frustration set in and go, ah, I trolled for over five minutes, I'm done. I'm not finding them. It'll never work out for you. Alright, he's circling around out back here, which is good, he's staying away from my long line. Good sized dolphin too, I saw him jump. You never know with dolphin. Sometimes they're solitary, sometimes they're schooled up. Off to the side of the boat out here, about 20 yards away. folks so we set off today with all intents and purposes of showing how to do offshore trolling and we came out successful we hooked up with a nice little skipjack tuna right off the bat and then not much further down the road we caught a nice keeper sized mahi i've said it countless times it only takes one fish to make that fishing trip successful and in this case we got two and at the same time we got to show you hands-on how to do offshore trolling what baits to use which are go-to lures the billy bait mini turbo slammer never fails you head out you persevere until you find the fish you troll around that area see if you can get more and then you head on when you hit the next one you keep on going that's how trolling works if you're ever thinking you're gonna catch like a hundred fish you're in for a big letdown. Two fish is an exceptional day. We're going home with food for the family and we're gonna enjoy. 
All right, folks, that about does it for this episode. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you had fun. And I hope you learned a little bit about offshore trolling for tuna and mahi. Till next time, South Florida saltwater fishing, going wherever the cool wind takes us.